Good morning, Mark Kevin, to all our visiting friends who share with us week after week, Sunday after Sunday. We are blessed all the time with your presence and with your support. This is a day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Our morning scripture will be coming from Daniel chapter 3, beginning with verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded that the mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the fiery burning furnace. Then these men, bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was so urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake unto saying unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth to the midst of the fire, and the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head sins, neither were the coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yield their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Good morning, my old Karen. Will you bow your head with me with a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, I am so thankful this morning that all of your amazing promise are true. Let us be full of all that is good this morning in the name of Jesus. Fill us this morning with the truth that is Jesus, your son. You are our God. Our soul search for you in a parched and weary land where nothing quenched our thirst except knowing you are with us every step of the way. Your love and kindness is better than life. Father, I pray you with all of my heart and bless you as long as I live in the name of Jesus. Almighty and everlasting Father, I will never stop thinking you for my family, my church family and friend that you have given me. 
I am asking in the name of Jesus that they will know your calling and your power and faithfulness. And those that don't know you will come running saying, what must I do to be saved? The Holy Scripture teach us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Thank you that we can call on you and share all our thoughts with you at all times. Your love warms my heart and brightens my day. It motivates me to love others the way that you love me. Unconditional love. Your love endures forever, and I pray your holy and righteous name. Our Heavenly Father, I'm asking your blessing upon all of those that are listed on our prayer list this morning. Will our strength guide and turf their body with your fingers of love. Continue to bless our pastor and his family, the shepherd of this house, I pray. And I'll be so careful to give you all the praise and glory, honor and glory. It's in Jesus' name I ask it all. And let the church say, Amen.
want to thank Pastor Matthews once again for bringing our word of prayer to us this morning. We always are mindful that the prayer of the righteous is very much, and with much prayer comes much power. Amen. Again, I'm on in scripture, Daniel chapter 3, verse 23 through 25. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of a fiery furnace. Then, Shadrach, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. We'd like to use for a subject this morning how to make it through the fire. How to make it through the fire. No one can escape the trials of life. No one is exempt from the troubles or problems of life. All of us will experience adversity, affliction, anguish. We're going to experience some distress. We're going to experience some grief. We're going to experience some hardship. We're going to experience some sorrow. We're going to experience some unhappiness. And we're going to experience some misfortune. And yes, we will have to experience some pain. Sooner or later, all of us have to face some hard times and trials in this life. Sooner or later, we're going to have to go through our storms, our rains, our troubles, our ups and our downs. Yes, sooner or later, we're going to have to too also go through our fire experience. James says it this way in James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 he said when you're going through some stuff he said count it all joy when you fall into dire temptation knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience. He reminds us even in the midst of our situation, our circumstances, our trials, our furnaces experience he reminds us to stay strong and have a steadfast faith in the Lord. This text is not a new text, it's not a surprising text. We know about the three Hebrew boys. We, we know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We sung songs about them when we were children. We learned the story in Sunday school and Bible study. We grew up knowing about this experience they're going through. We understand and we realize and we know that they were given those names by the Babylonian captives. We know that they were close friends of Daniel. We know that they were promoted over others in the kingdom and because of jealousy, hate those who thought that they were better than the three Hebrew boys those who thought they had blood lineage in the kingdom and should have been over them since they were enslaved in the community, they were outside they were misfit but yet because of their wisdom and the love of God they were extraordinary, and the king saw they had wisdom, they had understanding, and he promoted them. In other words, he super promoted them over the other princes and princes in the kingdom, and they hated it for that. They were criticized behind their backs because of that. And the Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar, because of the urging and the 
being tricked by the haters. He made an image of himself. He had them create a statue that stood 40 to 90 feet tall and at least nine feet wide. And it was made in his image. And not only was it made in his image, the Bible says that they were told that when the music played, when the band began to blow their horns, when the drummer began to rat a tat tat when they heard the strings begin to play, the Bible says that everybody, a lot of everybody who heard the noise, heard the music, would bow down to his image. But the Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had chosen a long time ago to worship the true God. And because they did not bow, the Bible teaches us in this text, they were arrested and tried by the king himself. Now they've been sentenced by fire. And their death was inevitable. And just in case you don't know how to handle what you may be going through right now. It may be something going on in your mind. You may want to feel like giving a call and quit just in case that you got something you feel you can handle just in case the flood in your life is just overwhelming just in case the burden that's on your back is trying you and pulling you down just in case somebody's getting on your last nerve just in case somebody trying to cause you to lose your mind up in here just in case you're about to give up there's some good news that we want to share with you this morning. There's some hope we want to share with you this morning. And you're going to find it in this text. With all that's going around, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we know what's going to happen to them. We know what happened to them. But yet, in spite of, there's still hope. And we find three things in this text that you need to remember and they're going to teach you how to make it through the fire. And the first thing you need to remember is God allows you to meet with fire. God allows you to meet with fire. The Bible says, Then when King Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his visage, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Verses 16, 17, 18 reminds us that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar. And the message tradition reads, your threat means nothing to us. If you throw us in the fire, the God we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up, O king. But even if he doesn't, it won't make a bit of difference, O oh king. We still won't serve your gods or worship the golden statue you made up. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar anger because this answer was so overwhelming that his face changed colors. He got red in the face. Face turned purple in color. His, his countenance has changed. Have, have you ever been so mad at somebody that you just look totally different? That you just scare somebody sometimes? My grandchildren, they look at me up and pop up. You're scaring me because it made me mad. 
They smiled and left my face. My eyes done got red. So now they know they might be in just a little bit of trouble. And Papa, you scared me. Well, you better stop doing what you're doing. The king got that angry that it changed his looks. It changed his experience. And then he announces to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that you will be punished by fire. And the furnace, not a new furnace, not a, 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 a new design furnace, but he wanted to make sure this furnace had been used over and over. It had already passed the test of burning stuff up. And the normal procedure of death by fire, the prisoners would have been stripped of their clothes. They would have been escorted to the top of the furnace and just thrown into the furnace bound and gagged. They would then just slowly suffer and then die of the heat of the furnace. But the king had them bound. And the binding of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't really about them. The binding was to mess up the testimony of the king. God knows how to mess up the testimony of your enemies. To bound them up, tie them up, tangle them up, and when they fell in, the only thing that would burn up were the ropes that would bind them. They try to mess with your mind. They try to make you lose your family. They try to make you lose your position. They try to make you lose your integrity. They try to make you lose your name. And the only thing to get lost is the very thing they have against you. I like to say it this way, when, when Satan plans your destruction, or your enemy plans your destruction, or when your haters plan your destruction, God plans your preservation. The Bible says that they were thrown, bound up. People could see the inside of the furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had an audience and the worst thing in the world is to have a problem in your life that you thought was a secret and find out that everybody knows about your problem. Yes, folk get to watch you go through. Folk get to watch you cry. Folk get to watch you struggle. And can I give you this for free? The same folk that got to watch your frustration will get a front seat of your elevation. Can I say it again? The very folk that got to watch your frustration, your aggravation, will get a front row seat of your elevation. And you can tell them, you saw my fall, now get ready to see my favor. You can tell them, you saw the damage, now get ready to see my deliverance. You saw the hurt, now get ready to see my healing. You saw the tears, now you get ready to hear my testimony. You saw my pain, now you get ready to see my power. The second thing to help you remember how you can make it through the fire is that you have to remember that God can change things in the fire. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of a burning fire furnace. They were bound 
and walking down to the furnace. But God is still working. No matter what you're going through, it may look like it's your last step, but God is still working. Don't you? They may be pushing you into your demise, but God is still working. They may be writing you up right now saying that you're not going to make it, but God is still working. The furnace was heated up ten times hotter than normal. Cremations are normally set at 1800 degrees. The fire is hot. If you want to torture a man, you set the furnace on low heat. But if you want to show who's in charge, you set the furnace on the highest heat. They had all their clothes on. They were dressed from head to toe. They had their ceremonial clothes on. They were on their way to death. But they were fully clothed. And the Bible says that the strongest soldier was used to bind them up and walk them to their death. But because of God being with them, the Bible says that the soldiers who had chosen to push them in, who chose their destiny to die, the Bible says that they were swallowed up by the flames. Can I give you this for free? No matter what other folk think your future will be, you remember that God has the final say. I don't care what people may say about you, you got to remember God has the final say. If folk tell you that you'll be a drug addict by the time you're 15 years old, you tell them, my God has the final say. If somebody tell you you're not going to amount to anything, you remind them that God has the final say. When loved ones tell you you'll never make it without them, you tell them, I love you, I know what you're trying to do, but God has the final say. And if a teacher tells you that you'll never graduate from high school, you stand up with a smile on your face and say, I'm going to make it because I have a God who has the last word. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. You trust in God. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what people say, you stand on God's promises. These three young men realize that God keeps his word. And the Bible said he understood science. They knew what a fire could do. They knew and understand that fire could be unchangeable. Fire can do some, some, some terrible thing that fire can, can destroy and, and fire can be used for one thing but fire can also be used for other things. But fire can be used for good and fire can be used for bad. And they knew that if they were in the fire their lives could be lost. But their faith says, but if not, our God is still able. And that's the thing we need to be mindful of no matter what you're going through. you got to remember that God is still able. And when you understand that God is able, he can change things when you're in the fire. Only God can tell the fire to skip over your house. Only God can tell the fire to leave you alone. Only God can tell the fire to be cool when it's around you. Only God can tell the fire you go across the street. Only God can tell the fire to lay down and die. He's that kind of God. He's able to do anything but fail. He can make changes in your life. How many of you right now ought to be shouting because God has made you what he wanted you to be when others told you you'll never be nothing in your life. Somebody right now is living in a place that somebody said you'll never have it. Your mama didn't have it, your dad didn't have it, and you wouldn't have it. But God provided a place for you. Put a roof over your head. God is that kind of God. In spite of what the world may say, in spite of what the world may do, God is able. Yes, only God has the power to change the position 
and direction in your life. And the third thing we need to remember is that God can turn the place of your fire into the place of your testimony. Ain't that all right? Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was a stone and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth man looks like the Son of God. The first thing King Nebuchadnezzar noticed is that somewhere between the barge to the furnace, and now there has been a change in the official count. He knew that three was bound up. He knew that he talked to only three Hebrew boys. And he watched them as they dropped off into the furnace. He saw one jump off, Shadrach jump, Meshach jump, Abednego jump into the fiery furnace. He saw three men jump. But when he looked into the furnace, the Bible says that somebody changed the count. In the King James translation, said, I see four men and one looked like the Son of God. But it said in the original text, that the Chaldean uses said, I see son of God. But somebody in here other than me ought to be able to go with you in to the fire. And he'll stay with you in the fire. Somebody this week have been in the line of fire. Somebody this week have gone through some smoky situations. Somebody this week have had a knock on your door that reminded you that you were still in a dangerous place in your life. But the difference is that we have a God that's able to take care of us in the midst of our fire. Oh, I wish I wasn't the only one who had been through some stuff. I wish I wasn't the only one who had been up and been down. I wish I wasn't the only one who had been through a fire situation. I believe that I'm not by myself. I believe there's somebody here other than me that can understand that even if you get in the fire, that God can turn some things around in the midst of your flame. He'll walk with you in the midst of your trial. He'll labor with you through difficult situations. He'll send hands to free you while you're in the fire. He won't leave you to burn. He'll cancel your burns. He'll remove the smell of smoke from your clothes. Then he'll walk with you and tell you it's going to be all right. Since so the Lord has delivered us from the fire, don't you think it's time that we give him some praise? Since the Lord has brought you through, don't you think you ought to have one thank you coming out of your mouth? Is there anybody here that, that under the sound of my voice that can just wave your hand and tell the Lord, thank you for bringing me through. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for rescuing me. Thank you, Lord, for walking with me. I'm in the fire, but Lord, I'm not by myself. Ain't that good news? You might be going through hell and high water, but there's a God that loves you in spite of yourself. I want to thank you for allowing me to breathe. I want to thank him for watching over my family. I want to thank him for taking care of Mount Carey Mission at the church congregation and everybody else through this pandemic. I want to thank him most of all for Jesus Christ. Mary's baby, Jesus Christ, Joseph's stepson, Jesus Christ, my lady of the better, Jesus Christ, my bright and morning star. I want to thank him because he died and didn't stay dead. Sunday morning, he got over all power in his hands. Sunday morning, he gave me the right to the true life. Sunday morning reminds me that one of these old days, when we close our eyes for the last time, it's not going to stay closed because we're going to get up one bright morning when this life is over. The Bible teaches us that I'll fly away. We sing a song, give me two wings. 
to veil my face. Give me two wings to veil my feet. Give me two wings so I can fly away and be at rest. You're not by yourself. Hold on a little while longer. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tight, God will bring you through the fire. You just hold on and believe in him. Trust in him. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayers to meet again.